How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another Play Arts Kai review. Today, taking a look at the DC variant Batman Rose Gallery Joker figure. Now, this is the second one released in the line, the first one being Two Face, which I've already taken a look at, so feel free to check that out. And then the third one is Mr. Freeze. And out of the three, I really like the Joker one. Um, it's probably because it's two iconic characters, Batman and Joker. Um, mashed up and I think the overall look of the figure is great. It is a variant figure um, So you got some nice liberties taken by um, Hitoshi Kondo who is the designer uh, concept was by Kelsey E. Britt But it's a fantastic looking piece, but before we get in depth with the figure. Let's take a look at the box Again, we get the nice art pick on the box here. You get the DC Batman logo. You get the Square Enix products uh, logo there and then you do get the Square Enix Authenticity sticker, which started with this release and then carried over to the Mr. Freeze. The Two-Face did not have it. I um, don't know why. Um, we do see this on like the remake Final Fantasy figures and also some of the newer Marvel variants. But it does have the window flap, so you open it up. You can see where the figure is with all the accessories. And on the other side, you get a nice little write-up, a little kind of history or origin of the whole rogues gallery and then you get a nice little bio of the mashup between batman and joker i will say right there the joker is misspelled um this is an error on square enix's part this isn't this is an authentic box you would think that because it's misspelled it would be um, a knockoff but it is not um it's just kind of weird that they misspelled it so on the back, you get to see some nice pics of the actual figure in different poses. And then don't forget on the bottom, you got the serial number for authenticity sake. All right, let's get that out of the way and bring the Joker back in here. And again, like I said, this is a really nice looking piece. Um, zoom in a little bit more. The color scheme works. Um, you got the purples, black. You got, I love the uh, spray painted yellow bat symbol on the chest there. You got the greens, the accent. Uh, to make it pop even more um, you do have some wear um, and stuff on some like the pants and even on the the cowl and such the face sculpt true uh, joker-esque i guess you could say um, you got the scars on the smile and such the collar to the utility belt having his uh little alarm clock to the Squirting flower, dynamite, and all that type of stuff. He does have a uh, holster for his gun, which we'll take a look at when we look at the accessory pieces. The tattered cape slash kind of reminiscence of his um, his coat is really cool. You got the buckles um, intermixed with purple, black, and um, and and I mean it's nicely sculpted too. So down to the buckles, onto the boots. Everything about this, it's really nicely done. I don't see any like paint blemishes or um, sloppiness anywhere on this figure, which is a good thing because sometimes Square Enix kind of gets a little um, crazy with that. But uh, or I know that's a complaint with some people, but all right, let's take a look at the accessory pieces and we'll get back into uh, articulation and some other so he does come with this head already attached to him in the packaging and he comes with two fisted hands and then he comes with an alternate head Let's see if I can zoom in a little more he's got more of a uh, kind of a squinty smirk going on again really well done no sloppiness on the uh, actual red for the lips which is nice And then he does come with the gun that I was telling you about. So you got it's, it's painted all in gold and then the, the handle here has got a nice little kind of gloss, bl glossy black. And then it does come with this piece, which you have this, his signature um, gun effect with the bang and you just can plug that in like so. It does come with three pre-molded Joker cards. You can see his face there. It does come with a battering. Just silver with some nice um, 
worn effect um, on it. So, and then he comes with a knife. Hopefully, you can see that. All right, bring the light down closer. So, all right, and now he comes with a couple other pairs of hands. He's got a left hand, which is more of a kind of a stylized. Not, excuse me, not left hand, right hand, excuse me. Um, it's got some decent detail as far as the fingernails being painted black, the white kind of purplish color for the fingers. He's got a left kind of open grip hand. And then he's got a left batarang or playing cards or knife holding hand. They are a little stiff, so I'd use a hot air gun or hot water. Um, I, I recommend that with any player. It's kind of figure with the hands, just so you don't, um, for loosening up the the peg holes to get them onto the figure or just to get their weapons into their hands. But here's his uh, gun holding hand. It's not too bad. All right. And he does come with the Play Arts Kai stand. I forgot to mention that. And the Two-Face one, I don't think I mentioned that in that review, but he comes with all the newer Play Arts Kai figures come with a Play Arts Kai stand. So, all right, as far as articulation is concerned, he's got quite a bit of normal um, articulation that we would expect with Play Arts Kai line. The head's on a double ball peg. It's a little, maybe it's just mine. I don't know, but the, uh, the ball peg is a little high, so you have this gap right there. I don't know if you can see, yeah, I can see it right there. Um, but you do get a nice range of motion with it being a little bit longer, but if you're looking at it from the side, it's kind of ugly, as you can see right through. It might just be mine, I don't know. Uh, but he can look down, he can look up, pretty good. The neck is on a ball peg also that connects into the actual torso. So you get more range of motion, so I mean, you can really look down touch his uh, chest with his chin if you want. The arms are okay. They're different from what we saw with the Two-Face. The Two-Face, they were, um, let me zoom in a little more here. The Two-Face, they were a ratcheting ball hinge, much like the elbow, wrist, and the ankles. This one is actually just a ball peg um, connected to an actual... Um, uh, let me see here, to an actual just um, hinge. So that's, you got the hinge for the shoulder and then the ball peg, if you can kind of see, connects right into the, um, into the torso. So you can kind of mimic a butterfly joint, but not really. And this is a s softer plastic, so you can get his arm around a little bit more. But you can manipulate the hinge so you can raise his, shoulder up or down to get more range of motion and such. But over time, the ball joint could, you know, loosen up. So he's going to have a little more floppiness in the arms, potentially. Um, he does have the bicep swivel. It's not bad. It doesn't break up the scope, which I like. Again, standard ratcheting hinge for the elbow, wrist, and ankles. So you get more than 90 degrees. Not the prettiest looking, but it works. It swivels at the top and at the at the bottom, same with there, with the wrist. Um, he does have the hinge for the torso. So you got one click down, so you can look at that, one click up. It's not as bad as the Two-Face. It doesn't have this huge gap, so that's nice. Um, again, this is a softer plastic and such, but that's not bad. I do wish that it had a little more, oh, he it does. It's actually on a ball hinge. Oh, it's a, it's a hinged ball peg. Well, there we go. So you do have some more side to side. So that's that's cool. All right. Um, the waist piece is a ball peg that connects to the T-joint. So you get, again, a nice range of motion. You got two floating crotch pieces here. So you got the belt, and then you got his little um, bikini briefs underneath. Um, sometimes they can get in the way, so you got to kind of manipulate it because you can have this gap, unfortunately. But it's all right. Um, ratcheted hip joints go about to there. I'm sure you can go a little bit more, but I don't want to risk popping it off the um, actual hip there and about that far back. 
does have a thigh cut. Unfortunately, it does kind of break the sculpt. Double jointed knee, and it's not that bad just because of the fact that you do have the kneecap. Let me, it's a little stiff on mine there. And go back pretty far. And again, he's got the same ball ratcheting hinge for the um, ankle. So you can manipulate it around to get the ankle rocker and go that far up, that far back. This is a really soft plastic, so it's not gonna hinder anything. Then he's got a not, well, I guess it's a pretty decent looking uh, toe hinge. So there we go. Uh, as far as the cape is concerned, or yeah, I'm just gonna call it the cape. Um, it is on a single ratcheting ball hinge that goes right into the back, which I like. So that's nice instead of to a separate plastic piece, which I believe the Mr. Freeze one has that. Um, so you can pop it up to the side. It's, this isn't that heavy, so that's nice being as one solid piece. But for dynamic poses, um, you may not, like trying to do that windswept look, may not get it as much. But you do have these nice ball hinges for some of the uh, parts of the cape. So like this one that you can manipulate it up or whatever. And this one, the same thing. So that, I think that's pretty nice. And it works well, and it's it's fairly hidden, so that's not bad. All right, there is that. Um, as far as his height is concerned, he is comparable to the rest of the newer Marvel variants, DC variants, stuff like that. He is about, let's see, about nine and a nine and three quarters, a little over ten inches tall if you count to the top of the ears for the cow. Um, so, fairly large. Here he is next to the rogues gallery, Mr. Freeze, and he is a little bit taller than um, the Mr. Freeze. I do like the uh, the sculpt of this guy. I forgot to mention that. I like the slenderness. It's very um, Joker, um, Joker-esque, I guess, whatever. I mean, it does look good though. And the coloring and everything. So that's it for uh, the Joker here, guys. Really great looking piece. I do like it. I would recommend it if you are a Batman Joker fan and you like kind of unique pieces. It really does have a nice shelf presence. It stands out. It's one of those pieces, like I said, with the Two-Face that when someone comes over, you know, checking out your collection or whatever, it's like, wow, what is that? It's kind of cool. But the price point may factor in as far as not wanting to pick it up um, Square Enix normal price for this is $200. So is it worth it? Um, that's, that's your call. I have seen this guy on sale at like entertainment earth and all that type of stuff. So keep that in mind, but that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed yet, please subscribe and, uh, check out plastic fanatics, 8 PM Eastern standard time right here on Saturday nights. And I will, uh, talk to everyone later. Thanks.